Okay, welcome to tutorial number six. I'm just going to run this quickly. Whoops, sorry. I'm not actually in the view of the... And it's going to come up on our screen to show you where we left off. And there is our, our list of dwarves. We used an NS array, which cannot be modified. If we go into our .m folder here, the array, we had to create a temporary array and set it equal to it. And of course, anything you do to it, you have to set equal to it because you can't change it. The array that can be changed is something called an NS mutable array. And we, have to, we have to declare it in both wherever we declared it here and here. Right? I'm just going to put a space there. <clears throat> And we come back here now, what you'll notice is some things begin to pop up, right? We don't need, uh, well, we don't need this anymore. We're going to comment this out. We do want these items. I'm going to copy them just for a second. Okay. And what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to put braces here. Because it's an NS mutable array, we're going to say, okay, set our create our declared NS mutable array equal to a mutable array and add array with objects similar to what we did with the other array however we're not going to have to allocate any space for it okay because the variable we create already has space and can be released so we don't have to do that here and as luck would have it the reason I copied the items there we go is to place them right there in the same fashion as you see. So it's the same basic concept. I'm just going to go back here. Um, comment that out again just so you see it. Okay. Braces again, NS mutable, array with objects. And we're going to backspace. Again, you notice each one you put in there, and then there was the last one. Okay. And close the brace. Oh, it's already closed. I apologize. And there we go. Okay. Um, oh. Um, hang on. <laughs> yeah, you need two braces. Okay. So a second set of braces which I don't need. Why do I even have them? Okay. It okay, sometimes the IntelliSense will pop up with uh if you put in a second brace it'll pop up with an extra brace, which it did over here. Now our sort function here is giving us a little bit of a problem here. Why? Well you remember this method was for an array, but we don't have an array anymore. We have an NS mutable array. Look what happens when I start typing in IntelliSense. This one is not selected. This one is. And any void one, any void method would be acceptable, but you can't use an NS array method. Uh, and then, of course, the code there is the same again. Selector, and then case, insensitive, and compare. And, of course, we terminate with our semicolon, but we're still getting a message here. Why? What's going on? Well. Remember with the array we had to set it equal to its to whatever we're changing it to, but because we can change a mutable array, we don't need to do that. You never set it equal to it. And so oh and uh one other thing we need to brace here. There we go. Um actually I'll go back for a second and just show you with the brace in place that it's still gonna flag us with that message. Yep, and it will. And then we take out the equal sign here, which we don't have to do. You're not supposed to do that because you can change the array. We're good. We're good to go. And one more last error here. We're going to, we don't need to release the array. We can get. We can comment that out because we don't have that array present. We're going to run this. Okay. And we're back again, to square one. We as it, as if <clears throat> we had done nothing, but we did something important. We created an array which can be changed. Now, we had one, two, a one, I'm sorry, one, two, three lines of code 
are now two. We even cut down the code. So how do we then come over to the main view nib where we have our keys? How do we then connect these to code? Okay. We need to type in an, an action. IB action, right? And this delete ID, this sender comes up as a we're going to call this delete dwarf. Okay, that name is whatever name you want to specify it as, anything, whatever you want to call it. It's the name of the method. It's an action method, which means it requires a keystroke or an action by the user. <clears throat> Pardon me. The what it returns is an ID type class ID type uh I'm sorry, an ID type object to the sender. I'm going to get into that later on sometime when I have time, but you don't need to know anything about that right now. We're going to save that. We're going to come here and look up here for a second, and you're going to see an error here. Why? It's an incomplete implementation. We can highlight that and show you. Why is it incomplete? Well, we created a method. The method doesn't appear here. Whenever you create a method and it doesn't appear, you get the incomplete, incomplete implementation. Pardon me. So we're going to type in here mm -hmm. uh, Wait a second Sorry uh, IB action Delete dwarf, there it is So we type the word IB action and there's our method Right? Our method is right there when we created. IntelliSense picks it up, it sees that it's created, and then we have to type in, I'm sorry, a brace here and a brace here for the method. I just want to go up to, to the top for a second and show you that the the, error, uh, the warning is gone, that the incomplete implementation is no longer in effect, and we have our delete dwarf <coughs> method in there. Alright, so now, we're going to come over to the nib and connect it. We're going to double click, or actually, yes, yeah, a double click here, and we are going to take the selector, the sent items, from the key and drag it to where the method appears. We put our method in the root view controller class. That's why we're going to the root view controller. And we highlight it, and of course, it connects it. Now if you run it at this point, which we will do, there we go. Nothing happens. Why? We have no code in there. No code. So we're going to go back to that code and we're going to say with an if uh, actually I'm going to just copy the code from another project to make life easy um, just hold on a second because it's a bit of code here and I want to get it correct there it is it's self editing that's what I was looking for when I said editing I'm going to copy that and put it back in here I'm going to discuss what this is so you know what it is all right it says if we're editing the actual class if that is false if we're not doing that then set it the editing to yes and animate it otherwise if we are editing don't do it so what does that do we're gonna run that <coughs> and show you what it does. It opens up these editing buttons here. Right? Now if you do something with it, it just hangs up. There's nothing there. I want to close this for a second and tell you why this second set of lines is here. So you understand it. Gotta comment that out too. Okay. If I don't put the second set of lines in what I'm saying is just set the editing to true and animate it. 
but now I can't undo it. So now I have to allow a, a second click to say, okay, undo my, my action, which is really what that is. Look and see if I'm in edit mode. If I am, set it to false, or take it away. Let's go back and just show you that it works. We're almost done here in this session. There it is, right? And now it goes away. But now, I can't delete anything. It hangs up. Why? What allows me to delete something? There's a method here. I'm going to uncomment it. The editing style method, right? Mm -hmm. It says if editing style is, this allows you, this is at looking at what the editing style is. It's either going to be delete or it's either going to be insert. Okay? It's an if then routine. If thens are popular in Xcode, and we'll talk about them at some other time and get into detail with them so you understand what they are. But <clears throat> in this case, it says if the editing style is in delete mode, then do something. Well, we have no code there, so it does nothing. We're going to put the code in there. One piece of code you see here is, to, is in the table view delete rows at index path with animation and then fade. Well, we can do that now, but nothing happens because we haven't gotten rid of what? The item from the array. We need to do that. So we need to bring up, we'll do this in uh, quotes, uh, rather in braces again. Uh, oops, I'm sorry. Self uh, list data. Um, remove object at index. We need something to pull the object out from the array. You remember we had a piece of code up here. Let's go up here. I'm going to go back to this code for just a second, but I want you to see something. You remember we had this code here? Remember this one here? I'm going to copy this for a second and come down here. I could place this code here as well and just type in row here. Alright. I need to remove the object at the index path row position. Alright. I could add that code if I want to, like I did above, to actually fill the cells. But I'm going to leave it. Why? Because you might guess it's easier to have one line of code than two. Now, if I had a lot of these that I would need to access that index path row, then that extra line of code would come in handy. Okay, so what does this say? Look at the array, remove the object you see at the index path, and then delete it from the table. Let's run this and see what happens. Okay, we're going to click here. Let's get rid of Grumpy, and Grumpy goes. Let's get rid of Doc, and Doc goes. I mean, we could continue this here. Sleepy, Sleepy goes, and you notice the dwarf numbering is the same. And Dopey goes, right? And so does Sneezy. And all right, Bashful, we we want you to go to. And Happy is the last one. We like Happy better than anything, but we'll get rid of Happy. And now, of course, since there's no edit, nothing to edit here, the editing mode won't come up. But here's something much more important. Watch what happens when we shut this down again and then we start it back up. We see all the dwarfs again. So what good was this to us? Well, not a lot because the data, and I just want to end this with the data. The data we have, we have here comes from the root view controller class. You remember I spoke earlier in one of our tutorials, I said the data flow is from your app delegate. Well, that's really where it should be from. But you can place it in other areas if you want. For the sake of an array like this, it's easy to place it in the root view controller. But if I'm going to access SQLite or any other type of data source, I'm going to want to put it in my app delegate because I'm going to want to have two things with that data and the first is I want to be able to load it up 
into my table view. And the second is when I add or delete something, I want to add and delete it at the data source and then reload it here. There's no reloading of it. I deleted it at my source and it goes. I, just, I can't reload it if I wanted to. And I would have to make a copy of what is existed in the array and reload that if I wanted to. So that's we're going to end tutorial six here with that. But the data is very, very important. And um, when we come back in seven, we'll get into that more. So what I want to just what's take away from tutorial six is is that up to this point, data has been in in our classes here, our our root view controller. It should be or I'd like to work with it within the app delegate because that again from the beginning that the app loads to the time the app is terminated that's where the data is found um, and and that's really it so we've taught you basically how to connect the key have a key run an action right basically the delete key didn't delete anything it just set the capability of deleting something and then with our editing style class in table view then we tell it what to get rid of all right so have a good day and uh, i'll see you at tutorial 7